Hi everybody, my name is Arthur and welcome to our Pixelpad tutorial. We are going to be coding our Fruit Slasher game on Pixelpad. Uh, once you log in on Pixelpad, you'll be redirected to this page here, right? This is the uh, tutorials page. You don't need any of those tutorials to start coding your games. You just have to go here on the left side in My Apps. We click that. And here you can start creating your new app. So I'm going to click on this button here, create a new app. And I can start filling the information for my app here. So for example, I can upload a app thumbnail if I have an image for that. I'm not going to do that now. Uh, you can choose the app's name. So the name of your game. For me, I'll just type here Fruit Slashers. And you can also choose an app description for your game that I'll also not include now. But uh, just keep in mind that you can always change those information so you don't have to uh, know them right now. You can always come back here and change them later. And once we've chosen all the information here, we leave the app engine the way it is, Pixelpad 2D, and we press Create. Once we press Create, we'll be redirected to this page, and this is the page where we are going to be coding our game. To start coding our games, let's first understand how this page works, right? This is the Pixelpad coding page. And how is this going to work? How can we use this page to start coding our games? So first here on the left side, we have everything that we'll need to code our games. So first we have classes. Classes are basically behaviors, how each thing on our game will behave. We have them rooms. Rooms are basically different screens for our game or different scenes. Whenever we're going to add more scenes to our game or different screens to our game, we have to add more rooms. We have sprites. Sprites are basically images that we use in this, inside our game. And we have sounds that are basically music or sound effects, right? Anything like that. And later we have functions. Functions I will not be covering in these classes, but they're basically blocks of code that you can use to make your life easier. But we don't really need them to start coding our games. So here in the middle of the screen, we have the code window. Here we can add code. We can type stuff there, right? And here you can see that we have the start tab and the loop tab, and they are different. You can see that whenever I type something on the start tab, it doesn't stay there whenever I change to the loop tab. And whenever I do the same for the loop tab, it doesn't stay there when I change to the start tab. So they are different and they hold different codes, right? And I'm going to show you how they're different in a second. Let's just keep going here first. So here on the right side, we have the game window. You can see that here we already have the save button. That's a very important button here on Pixelpad. If you don't save your project and you leave uh, Pixelpad, you have lost all your progress. So just remember to always press save to save your project, right? And besides the save button, we have the play button. Whenever we press play, the play button becomes a stop button, right? So you can play and stop your game. So every change that you make on your code you have to stop and play your game again to see the changes, all right? And whenever we press play as well, you can see only a black screen here. That's because we don't have anything inside our game yet. We haven't uh, coded anything yet, right? And below the game window, we have down here the console window. The console window will show us if we have any error in our code and where this error is. So I'm going to use this console window to teach you better how these start and loop tab works. So here, let's start uh, with the start tab. I'm going to go to the start tab here and just type start. So it starts not recognized on Pixelpad. This is nothing. We cannot just type stuff here. So whenever I type uh, something that Pixelpad doesn't know what it is and I try running my game, it will give me an error. So it says that the name start is not defined in game.start on line one. So game.start means the game class. So here the game class on the start tab, on the start tab, on line one, line one. So it's saying that I've typed start on the game start tab on line one, and it doesn't know what that is. And as Pixelpad doesn't know what that is, it cannot execute that code, right? So it bugs our game. It crashes our game. But you can see that the start error was printed just once, right? Because we are on the start tab. But here on the loop tab is a bit different. So I'm going to uh, erase this start from the start tab. I'm going to go to the loop tab and I'm going to type something here that Pixelpad doesn't know what it is as well. So I'm going to type loop here. Loop. Pixelpad doesn't know what loop is. This is not a code. This is not anything. So whenever I try stopping and playing my game again, you can see that now we get many, many, many errors, right? They never stop coming. 
So that's the difference between the loop and the start tab. The start tab will run whenever we press play in our game. And the loop tab will keep running again and again and again and again many times per second, okay? So here you can see that the loop uh, is, uh, is running many times per second, but it's also giving us the error that is uh, pretty much the same as they start, but here for the loop tab, right? So the name loop is not defined in game loop on line one. So I could change this, for example, for banana. So my game doesn't know what banana is, right? So the name banana is not defined in game loop on line one. So it will give us uh, the exact place where the error is, which is pretty cool, it's gonna help us a lot. All right, so let's uh, erase everything we have from these two tabs. Let me play my game here just to clean my, my console window. And now we can start adding stuff in our game. So we are gonna call our fruit slashers game, right? So the first thing I want to do is I want to include a fruit in my game. And as we started with banana, let's start with a banana. Let's start adding a banana to our fruit slashers game, right? So how can we start adding a fruit to our game? So first, if we're gonna add anything inside our game, we need a class to do that, right? So I'm gonna create a class here. So I'm gonna go on, on classes, I'll press plus. And here I have to give a name for the class. So the name of this class I'm gonna give is fruit. So although I'm gonna create a banana in my game, the banana is a fruit, right? And as I'm creating a fruit slashers game, I'm gonna have more fruits, right? So I'm gonna create a class for all the fruits. So I have here the fruit class and we don't really need to capitalize fruit like I'm doing here, but for classes, uh, that's the best practice for it. So we always follow the best practice, right? So let's capitalize for fruit and for any other classes we're gonna create. And once I type fruit there, I can just press okay. And now I have here my fruit class created. So you can see that my fruit class is a bit different than my game class. They have a different icon, right? That's because the game class is a special class because the game class is gonna run all the code inside it whenever I press play my game. Whenever I press play my game, the first class gonna, that's gonna be executed is the game class, right? We have to have a start point, and that's the game class. So now that I have a fruit class here, I can start creating my fruit inside the game. And how can I create my fruit inside the game? I can just say fruit, so the name of my class, the exact name of my class, right? and bracket bracket. And here I need to uh, use uppercase here because my class is also with uppercase. So it have to be exactly the same. So fruit brackets brackets, whenever I press stop and then play again, you can see that now we have a blue square in the game and my code I put on the star tab, right? I don't put it on the loop tab because I don't want it to keep creating many, 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 many fruits right now. I want it to create just one fruit, right? So I created one fruit on the start tab and you can see that it's a blue square because this fruit doesn't have a sprite yet. So we need an image to this fruit, right? So if I need an image, I'm gonna go to the sprite sections here and I'm gonna go press this plus button on the sprites. And here we have the asset store on Pixelpad that we can look for sprites to use in our game. So for this first moment, uh, we're gonna look for fruits, right? And I'm gonna add a banana first, but you can see that we have other fruits around here. We have this apple, we have this other banana here that they are animated, but try not getting any animated uh, sprite for now because to implement them is a bit different. We're gonna learn how to implement animated sprites or animations, right, in our game uh, in the future. But for the first moment, just choose a static uh, fruit. So we have the banana, we have an eggplant here and we have other stuff. But I'm gonna get my banana here and I'm gonna select asset. So I clicked on the banana and then I clicked on select asset. And for the name of this asset, we have to give a name to everything we're gonna create. For the name of this asset, I'm gonna say banana. And here we don't need to capitalize the first letter because that's not a class, right? So the name banana and then I press okay and you can see that my banana was loaded here for us on the sprites, right? So now, how can I give this banana sprite to my fruit? So if I'm gonna add a image to this fruit, I first have to give it a name. And why do I need to give it a name? Because I wanna say that this fruit here needs to have this sprite. And how can I call this fruit here if I don't know its name, right? 
how do you call a person that you don't know the name? You can't, right? So we need to give a name to this fruit. And to give it a name, I will just add here, before I say fruit brackets brackets, I add the name of this fruit and then later I add an equal. So for now, as I'm gonna create a banana, I could call this fruit a banana, for example, and I say the banana is a fruit. So banana equals fruit. And it doesn't change anything on my game for now, but we know that this fruit's called banana now. Now, what I can do is I can say that this banana has a sprite. So I'm gonna go to the next line here and I'm gonna say that this banana has a sprite. So banana dot sprite. So I'm saying the sprite inside my banana, or I'm saying that my banana has a sprite that is a sprite from the file. So here we need to say sprite brackets, and then we need two apostrophes. And inside those apostrophes, we put the name of the file with our image. So here the name of our file is banana.png. So you remember when I uh, took this sprite, I named it banana, but my file's name is banana.png. So whenever I say that banana is a sprite from the sprite file with the name, and then I have to say the name of the file. So I cannot say just banana here. If I say just banana, you see that when I stop and play, it gives me an error because I'm trying to create a texture or a sprite that is not defined, it's undefined, right? So here I cannot say just banana, I have to say .png. That's the full name of my sprite, right? So my banana is a fruit and my banana has a sprite that is a sprite from the file banana.png. And now whenever I press stop and play my game, I can see my banana in the middle of my game, which is pretty cool. And that's it for today's class. We learned how to create a class and a sprite and how to put them together to create something in our game, right? Just one more thing, uh, we call this uh, fruit a class because it is on the classes, right? But whenever we give it a name to create it inside the game, like we do here, banana is a fruit, my banana inside the game, that's called an object. So an object is whenever we, we create a class inside the game, this thing becomes an object. So my banana here inside the game is an object from the class fruit. Make sense? All right, so just press save on your game and we keep going on next class. All right, so I see you in the next class. Bye.